Hello! So if you guys didn't know already, which if you didn't, shame on you, I'm in the paramedic program and it is required of me that I should be able to drive an ambulance. Editing Anya here, just uh, need to chime in really quick. I did this footage back in November, like seven months ago. Since then, I'm now graduated paramedics. I just wrote my MCA. Uh, so a lot has happened since I... I recorded all this. The whole purpose of having recorded this stuff was because when I initially was going for my F licensing during the summer, which was like last year, uh, I had to learn a lot of car vehicle stuff in a very short period of time. And I don't know car. I'm not a, I'm not a mechanic in nowhere near in any sort of way. So I had to learn a lot of stuff about cars really quick and I was panicking, especially when I couldn't find any online video visual resources to help me with that. So I was stressed, especially having only an in-class session and then two, I had two on-road sessions that I paid for just to get an idea of what the heck I was going to be evaluated on. So that's the whole reason why for this footage just was because I had access to an ambulance and wanted to kind of simplify it and show how easy it really was. So as I don't go through the whole schedule two, which is what I will explain, uh, it's very simple. You just, I'll put the link in the description for the schedule two for you to download. You just have to go through the list and I even indicate in the video what things are so that you're not going to be as confused as I was. <laughs> At least if you're not car savvy. Back to the old footage. Bye. To drive an ambulance, you need to have an F license. When I went to get my license, I was in panic mode. I didn't know what to expect. I was afraid to forget something. It was a stressful time. <laughs> Being a paramedic student, we already have enough to worry about. Why am I worried about a driving test? I try to look online, try to find videos on how to do what is called a pre-trip or a circle check. And I just couldn't find the one that was fitting to what I needed to do to one acquire my license and suit the vehicle I'm going to be driving. Also one that's specific to the province of Ontario in Canada. Being me and being the one to do things like this, I thought I'd take it upon myself to be that person to make that video because I passed, luckily, first go. <laughs> I am officially an F licensee. I just wanna make something that will help my fellow paramedic students, comrade people. So of course at the best time of the year, winter, I took it upon myself to do the pre-trip slash circle check inspection or what to look for because from the sounds of it, depending on city to city, the evaluation or test gets done differently. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going outside in the bloody cold for you guys to learn what to look for in your circle check. Let's go. This right here is air. Tell me. I kill you. So, before it does, <coughs> people coming out of college. Good times. Good times. This sounds like a good plan. Let's 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 do this. Let's just yeah, let's just, let's just, let's start this. Wait, wait, before I start actually, I need to mention there is three specific words that are quite key to getting through this test. My glasses keep fogging up. First word is present. So whatever it is that you're looking for or inspecting, it is present. It is secured to the vehicle and it is not damaged. Those are the three key, three key words to use during this evaluation. Now let me show you what to look for on the truck using the Schedule 2 form. Obviously, this form is what is used for the F driver's license. It is what should be kept in your documentation within the cab of the truck slash bus, but we're talking about tr ambulance trucks. We're gonna stick with the word truck today. Um, let's begin. In column two, you'll see the minor defects. Minor defects are, well, malfunctions or defects that occur, but the vehicle is still operational. You, all you need to do is advise a supervisor 
put it in the report and you can continue to drive the vehicle. If your vehicle has a major defect, which are found in column three, it must be reported to the supervisor, reported in your documentation, and the vehicle cannot be driven. As you're identifying with the three key words, you also want to verbalize the minor and major defects of whatever you are inspecting. Luckily, you don't have to remember all these minor and major defects because you are allowed to have the Schedule 2 form with you during the evaluation. For the exterior body and frame, a minor defect would be an insecure missing body parts, insecure or missing compartment door, or damaged frame and body. A major defect would be visibly shifted, cracked, collapsing, or sagging frame members. There's lots of glass and mirrors on an ambulance. A minor defect to look for would be a required mirror window glass fails to provide the acquired view to the driver as a result of being cracked, broken, damaged, missing, or maladjusted. doors make sure they're all secure and they lock in place as well as the windows again you need to make sure they're present secure and not damaged as well with all the other side doors you need to make sure those can lock in place and open properly too as well as the equipment inside each door you need to make sure they're all secure The fuel system only has major defects, which include missing fuel tank cap, insecure fuel tank, and dripping fuel leak. And as you're going around the truck, you want to look underneath to make sure nothing's sagging or damaged and that everything is present. When looking underneath the front of the truck, you want to make sure nothing, there's no fluid leaks at all either, as well as anything else that's sagging or could be possibly damaged. For the exhaust system, you want to visually see under the truck if there's any leaks, as well as enter the cab while closing the windows, having the vehicle on, smelling for leaks in the cab. Usually there's a mallet carried in the truck so that you can hammer at the tire and check its air if there's any leaks. Some people just like to give it a kick. You also want to check and see if there's any bulging or cords exposed on the tire to basically signify if there's any damages. You want to also check if there's any damages to the rim as well as check the lug nuts to make sure they're all secured in place and also make sure that the valve stem is also accessible and that you can see it. Then when you're down by the tires, you usually also want to check the suspension at the same time. Now before it gets too dark, time to do the internal check <laughs> in the cab of the truck. The driver's seat minor defect would be seat is damaged or fails to remain in set position, or a major defect would be if the seat belt or tether belt is insecure, missing, or malfunctioning. While checking the steering wheel as well, you want to open your window and pop your head out to check and see if the wheels are corresponding with the way you're turning the steering wheel. To check the hydraulic brake system in the interior, not only do you check the light on the dash, but you pump the brake before turning the vehicle on until you can no longer pump it. Once you can no longer pump the brake, turn the vehicle on 
while keeping your foot on the brake, the brake should release. Heaters and defrosters. Minor defect would be control of system failure. Major defect, defroster fails to provide unobstructed view through the windshield. That's everything in Schedule 2. That's it. And I mean, you have this with you on the test. So you're good, right? Now this video is an existing thing in Ontario to help you, unless it changes, which would really suck. But I hope this will help you prepare for your F driver's license testing. Cause you know, as a paramedic student, we have enough to worry about, right? My hands are freezing. It's really cold and it's getting dark outside. <sighs> Give this video a big thumbs up down below. Leave a comment if, I don't know, did I miss something? Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!